a lot, doctor. <laughs> Couldn't figure that one out. Three weeks into this, I know how to unmute the mic. Thanks. All right. Ten seconds. Okay. Morning. All right. Good morning, good morning. everybody. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, good morning. Good morning. So, uh, great. You know, our viewers will be coming in shortly. But uh, this is our, our third week of our virtual speaker series. Allison, I can't believe we're three weeks in already. Uh, it's pretty I crazy know. when you think about it, right? Um, oh, yeah. So I just want to thank uh, Fourth District Council Member uh, Anthony D'Esposito for, for joining us today and um, our Director of Social Studies in Oceanside, uh, Mitchell, Mitchell Bickman, for kind of being, a, I guess, a commentator. So we thought it would be a nice combo to have the two of them on together. Um, so we're, you know, we're excited for today and just for our, our viewers out there, uh, remember you can uh, post the box uh, when you get in here and, uh, you know, if it, we can highlight it, we'll do that. We'll give you a shout out. We'll have some fun with it. Um, I'm Dr. Gazone, one of the assistant principals at Oceanside High School. I'm with uh, my partner in crime, Dr. Glickman Rogers and uh, uh, Mr. Bickman. Uh, Councilman uh, D'Esposito, please, uh, we're going to keep this really informal in the sense that, uh, you know, where, you know, most of us are in our homes. I think, uh, uh, Councilman, you are in your office probably as a essential worker. So, um, you know, thank you for going to work every day and then trying to keep our, our communities uh, safe. Uh, but let's just, you know, we like to keep it on a first name basis here, keep it light, uh, have some fun. And, and, and stuff of that nature. So, hey, Vincent, uh, thanks for showing up. I know you're here every day. Uh, we like to give you a shout out every single time you come on. And we see your brother, Joe. Joe, how we doing, my man? Um, so, Councilman or Anthony, can you just maybe tell us a little bit about your position, uh, where it kind of fits in, in in the political world, I guess you would say, um, what it is that you do, maybe who you represent, stuff like that? Sure. So I, I guess, um, you know, the, the government that we have here um, in the United States is sort of broken into a, a few layers, um, especially on Long Island and Nassau County in the town of Hempstead. Um, there's multiple layers. So it, it kind of starts on a very local level, which I guess would be your, your local villages, uh, then goes to the town level, um, county, state, federal level. Um, but once you kind of get into the, um, the town and the state level, um, the representation of uh, constituents is kind of the same. Um, we represent just about the same amount of people. So in the town of Hempstead, uh, there's six council people, um, each represent a different district, and then there's a supervisor. So there's seven people on the board, um, all with an equal vote. It's a little bit different than the county, um, where there's a um, legislature that can vote, and then the county executive has veto power over that legislature. The uh, town of Hempstead doesn't have that. We all have equal votes. Um, to represent our district. So um, each council person represents approximately 130 to 145,000 people. Um, the town of Hempstead um, on a whole uh, has about 775, 780,000 people. We're the largest township in the United States, uh, bigger than I think four states at this point. So uh, it's, it's a huge township. Um, we have uh, 25 departments that operate each and every day. Uh, we main maintain 1,200 miles of roadway. Um, and obviously, we've seen over the last couple of weeks in a situation like this, a lot of people depend uh, on their government for uh, to keep them healthy and safe. That's great. So what would you say is your like primary uh, focus or, or mission or, or purpose in, in doing what you do? Um, you know, it's definitely an important position. And we would love to kind of like what, you know, what drives that, that position? So I, I guess uh, in, in, in town government, um, you know, obviously one of the things that's most important is to maintain services um, at the best cost for the taxpayer. I think, you know, we all agree that here in Nassau County, um, taxes are always an issue. So uh, in the town of Hempstead, we do our best to maintain uh, the services that we provide and, and increase those services all while, uh, you know, having conservative view on the uh, on the main line. Uh, over the last two years, I'm, I'm proud to say that we've actually cut taxes in the town of Hempstead. Um, so that's been something that um, we're very happy with. Um, but really what it comes down to uh, in town government is, um, I, I think what's most important is making sure that the people that you represent um, are well taken care of. It's uh, I, I really pride myself and my office works very hard in making ourselves accessible, whether it's, you know, through social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 
Um, I even signed up for a TikTok account the other day. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, but um, to make myself accessible, you know, all hours of the day um, and really deal with constituent um, issues here. You know, I, I want to make sure that um, nothing is, you know, many people call and say, oh, this isn't important. And it could be a stop sign or a pothole filled. All that stuff's important. I always, I was always taught that if someone's calling your office, whatever they're calling about may not be important to everyone else, but to them, it's the most important thing at the time. So I think our goal here is to really make sure that we um, maintain those services and provide the best possible uh, constituent affairs as, as we possibly can. And that's uh, whether someone calls this office and maybe it's not something that the town deals with, um, but we, we will then serve at that point as their liaison between state government or county government or federal government um, to make sure that whatever their answer or, or whatever their concern is gets answered. So what would you say, what would you think is the most interesting part of your job? You know, you, you, you wake up and you're like, ah, oh, you know what? Can't wait to do this today. I, lo I love doing this. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, I, I have to say I have a little bit of a unique situation in that um, before I became a member of the town board, um, I was an NYPD detective. And that was another job that, to be honest with you, I... Um, I loved going to work every day because uh, it was something that uh, every day was different. You got to really uh, take on challenges that uh, you probably wouldn't as being a kid that grew up in Island Park. Um, so I think in government and politics, uh, it's very similar and that no day is, is very alike. Um, you kind of wake up each and every day with somewhere different to go, different people to meet and uh, different challenges to face. And I think that, um, I, I always say whenever I speak to classes or whenever I uh, go and speak um, to students anywhere, you know, one of the things that I think really prepared me for a um, career in government and politics was the police department. Because um, in the police department, you know, you worked with people who came from different economic backgrounds, different race, different religions, um, definitely different political views. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, my life depended on them and their life depended on me. And, and you really um, learn the ability to work with others that may not be similar to you. And I think that I take the, the lessons that I've learned um, being an NYPD detective and I bring it to uh, the work that I do here in Hempstead every day. Besides, hey, Mitch, yeah. Sorry, so uh, I didn't know that, that you were an NYP detective. That's interesting. Were there, I mean, yeah. going back is far as like, you know, elementary school, were you ever in any, you know, kind of student, any other like government positions, like student government, student council? Like, did you ever have an inkling at a young age I, that I, I, was a strength of yours or an interest? So I was, uh, I, I obviously born and raised in Island Park. I went to uh, Hegarty Elementary School, Lincoln Orange Middle School, and then I went to Chaminade High School. Mm -hmm. um, but I was the president of student council in uh, Lincoln Orange. Oh, okay. um, and I don't know, you know, my teachers at the time would probably would have said that maybe this was something that was in the future. I never really thought it, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I did serve as president of the student council. Oh, very neat. What other, so, I guess, can we just continue with that, Paul? So, yeah, go ahead. Know, yeah. What, what kind of, skills or characteristics did you um possess as a as a young as a student um that kind of might have been a hint that this could have been a career opportunity for you like um you know did your teachers tell you or did you know in middle school and high school um that you had a knack for you know leadership or their skills or characteristics that you possess that that allowed you to um take on this role and be successful in your career I think it certainly depended on the teacher. <laughs> no, um, okay, give us from, I, your no, I have, from your perspective. Yeah, no, I, I think that um, I, you know, I always, you know, growing up was one of those people who kind of, um, you know, tried to find solutions to problems and really in government, that's kind of, okay, you know, that, what, right? what you do. Yeah, that's what you do each and every day. Even if people don't agree with the solution that you find, uh, you know, you have to, you're basically a problem solver each and every day, whether it's, um, you know, on a more, you know, global level that it's a townwide issue or something uh, very small that could be specific to three houses in Oceanside. Um, whatever it is that you're doing, you, you're trying to find solutions to problems and trying to get people to come together, to work together. Um, 
you know, to really make our communities better. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Mr. Bickman, you, you heard that problem solvers. <laughs> so Solutionaries is what he would say, right? right. Mr. Bickman. Yeah, no, that, yeah, yeah. That, that's something that we focus on in the schools. Councilman uh, Esposito has been in a number of times to talk to our students and we're always grateful when he comes in and shares his expertise. Um, one of the things that that's really interesting for our students right now is that there's always been events that define each generation. So we would say that a lot of us on this call, 9-11 was one of the key events that defined our generation and possibly the previous generation, maybe our parents would be that of Vietnam and World War II going back further. Um, so right now for a lot of our students, um, when they look back, this COVID-19 is going to be a defining um, <clears throat> historical event for them. So a lot of them are, are journaling right now and um, creating video accounts of their time and their experiences. Um, and relating this back now to um, to government, um, some of our students have expressed interest in, you know, saying more than ever, asking questions like, what is the government doing? What, what is their role in all this? Um, are there opportunities, probably not at the moment, but maybe down the road for our students to do any type of job shadowing with you or internships with you? Because that's something that I know they've expressed interest in and possibly more so now than ever before. Are we frozen? I don't know. Uh, Councilman, can you hear me? I think he might be frozen. I froze the councilman. <laughs> That's really something, Mr. Bickman. Yeah, it's a good question, Mr. Bickman. So um, while he's frozen, um, Mitch, you're, you're a director of soul studies. You do a lot of work with, um, you know, history and, and policy, policy, politics and, and government. Um, what are some opportunities? Is he back? I'm here. I heard you guys the whole time. Okay. So did you hear Mr. Bickman's question? That I didn't hear. I only heard you. Okay. Again, uh, Mitch, if you could ask again. Yep, sure. So just I'll, I'll skip to the question part. Um, students more so maybe now than ever before are interested in the government's functions during this time um, and maybe have, you know, found some interest in looking into government themselves. So is there any opportunities uh, for internships um, or job chatting with your office? Not not now in the immediacy, but possibly down the road. Absolutely. Anybody that wants to come hang out with me right now, I'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, um, internships, you know, something that I, I'm always... Um, interested in, um, you know, whether it's, you know, the schools that I've attended or, or anywhere in my district, if, if there's anyone interested, there's really here in the town of Hempstead, there's, I, you know, I, I kind of run, it's a, it's very parallel to like my old world in the police department. There's really a job for anyone. So if anyone's interested in, in government and it may not be the administration part of government, it could be, um, another aspect of government, whether it's our controller or our budget director who handles a $600 million budget or our highway department who maintains 1200 miles of roadway and makes sure our streets are plowed or our sanitation department who in this time, you know, we've seen that they're essential because if we don't pick up garbage every day, um, the, this health crisis becomes a public health hazard. Um, so there's so many opportunities and uh, honestly, anybody listening or anybody, uh, any of your students that would love to be involved here, happy to have them. Hey, out of curiosity, what are the what, what's the process for these different positions? Uh, whether it's sanitation or maybe um, a higher level, is is it are there exams or are there, is it competitive? Is it an open application? Is it, is it dependent just for some students who might be interested in different yes. areas? So the town of Hempstead um, operates. Um, we have our own civil service department, which um, kind of follows the same rules and regulations as the county uh, and the state civil service. So there are. Uh, many positions throughout the town of Hempstead in many of our departments that are civil service. Um, once you get to the sort of the administrative portion, which is uh, either directors or um, commissioners or deputy commissioners, those are appointments by the town board. Um, very often they are people who have sort of come up the ranks and learned um, how it is to operate a huge sanitation department or, um, you know, someone in the parks department who uh, has kind of moved up the ranks and is now um, we just appointed a new commissioner who's someone who spent his career in the Parks Department, uh, and now he leads the Parks Department workforce, um, you know, of almost 100 parks. You know, the town of Hempstead has almost 100 parks in our park system. So um, there are 
so many opportunities. You know, our, our jobs are always listed on our website. Um, but like I said, if most a lot of the positions are civil service, which tests are related. There's promotional opportunities that involve a tests. And then our upper administration usually falls into appointments by the town board. Cool. So <clears throat> your path to your to your seat. Um, let's talk about it. You went to, after high school. What, what happened? Do you, you do some schooling? You know, you went, you were in the police force. Um, you know, what was what was your path to to your seat? And is is that a similar path? Is that a path that everyone has to follow to to get to your seat? Let's talk about that a little bit. So I think that the path that I took was probably not very similar to most people in, in government or politics. So I, um, like I said, born and raised in Island Park, I went to um, elementary and uh, middle school um, in Island Park. And then I went to Chaminade High School. I graduated there um, in 2000. So I guess um, for a lot of the elected officials in maybe Nassau and Long Island, I guess I'm on the younger side. Um, after Chaminade, I went to Hofstra University. Um, I graduated there in 2004, um, and then I worked briefly um, in the private sector, actually um, for a nonprofit um, doing fundraising. Uh, and then in um, late 2005, I was called uh, to the NYPD, you know, where I went into the police academy. Um, and then I was a promoted detective in 2009. Um, so from 2009 to 2016. I was uh, a detective in, in Brooklyn in the 73rd Precinct Detective Squad. Um, and then in January, February of 2016, I was asked to um, join the town board. So um, I guess it's, it's a little bit of a different path. You know, I, I have to say that um, probably standing a foot post in Brownsville, Brooklyn uh, in 2006, I never thought that uh, 10 years later I'd be sitting uh, as a member of the Hempstead Town Board. So I, I think it is a little bit different. But... Um, I think really what it comes down to is, you know, always, and I encourage anybody that's li listening, um, you know, that get involved in your community. If, if government and politics is something that you're interested in, getting involved is important. I, I, I see Mike D'Ambrosio, Seth Blauer on here. You know, there's two people who are, are really involved in their community, uh, whether it's the Kiwanis or the school board. Um, for me, I was, uh, you know, I served as chief of the fire department from 2009 to 2016, um, just always involved in my community. And I think that's kind of where it starts. I mean, my, my parents were involved in the community, whether it's our local church at Sacred Heart. Um, my dad served as deputy mayor in the village of Island Park for, like, you know, probably two decades. Um, so, you know, it was kind of something that I grew up in, but. Um, I always say any, anyone who's interested in government and politics, I think there's like a stigma that um, you got to go to school, go to law school, and then you can get into politics. And I think that there are so many different routes. And I always say that, um, you know, getting into government and politics, whatever, go to school to whatever it makes you happy, whether it's accounting or law or, you know, whatever it is that you want to study. Um, don't think that you can only study one thing and get into government politics because you really can, you know, study what makes you happy. And that's what you should because government and politics aren't always around forever. Um, so you want to make sure that you have something to lean back on um, and something that makes you happy for the rest of your life. Are there any uh, activities or events, courses that you didn't take advantage of over the years, like high school, college, that you wish you had? Or that um, you some, sometimes I wish. Um, it's kind of like a double-edged sword because there's um, – I always think to myself that I, I wish I would have taken advantage of going away to college. Um, I went to Hofstra and commuted. Um, so that, you know, sometimes I, make, I think to myself, you know, I, I wish I would have went away. But then on the other end – um, I probably wouldn't have been involved or as involved in my community, especially the fire department. I wouldn't have been able to give the time that I gave um, to the fire department and probably wouldn't have, um, you know, reached the ranks that I've reached uh, if I had gone away. So there, you know, I, I sometimes wish that I had uh, had had taken the, the trip to go away to college. What about in Chaminade? What were you involved in any? Um, I know they have, you know, robust program. Anything that you were involved in there that was helpful or that you weren't involved in that you wish you were? Um, I guess I, you know, I liked um, um, athletics. Um, I do wish I was on the speech and debate team um, because uh, everyone tells me I do like to spar. 
Um, so I probably could have picked up some tips there. So that's one thing that uh, uh, I, I wish I was more involved in. And, and just, I think, um, overall in the, um, you know, in the school, I, I, I was involved in, in after school activities, but I think um, uh, just getting involved in really the, the global aspect of the school more, uh, I wish I did. And it was something that I really embraced after I left there. Right. Okay. Did you talk? We have that at the high school speech and debate. We do. We are uh, we are a nationally ranked um, model UN World Interest Club that uh, students can can take advantage of that opportunity. Um, Councilman, you spoke a lot about uh, volunteerism and giving back, which you um, have had a number of different uh, both formal positions and informal volunteerism. Um, can you talk about some of the organizations or other opportunities that either the town of Hempstead partners with or that you can recommend that some students can get involved in if they're interested in you know helping out their their respective communities? Sure. Well, I know tomorrow you have Rob Schulman on, right? Yeah. So that's, uh, I actually sit on the board of, uh, Lim Kine, So that's, you know, something that, uh, I know he's always looking for volunteers and, um, th it's a great organization, but at least on the, on the town level, um, one of the places that is near and dear to my heart is Camp Anchor. Um, it is a camp down in Lido beach, um, for, um, special needs kids and adults. Um, and we have hundreds of volunteers there who, um, you know, some have started there as a volunteer and then eventually um, start working there. Um, but it's a place that, you know, if you ask anyone who has volunteered there who, or have worked there, it's a place that's really changed their lives forever. Um, and we also have, um, for those animal lovers, we have a, an animal shelter in Wantaw uh, that we're always looking for volunteers, um, whether it's, you know, individuals who may want to uh, become a vet one day or a behaviorist, uh, an animal behaviorist, or just somebody who likes dogs and likes to take them for a walk. I mean, there's, there's volunteer opportunities down there as well. So <clears throat> Councilman does have to go in about five minutes. He has a one o'clock, uh, 105 meeting. So I, I, I do want to wrap up uh, shortly and, and thank um, Councilman for giving us, giving us his time. But I guess one, I have two more questions, but one question is really, we talked about the path to your seat and different people take different paths and we have success. We have successful people in your seat and not so successful. What does it take to, once you're in the seat to be successful? Like what type of skills uh, are important for, for students uh, or people looking to go into a career field of government politics? What is it they need to work on and, and be good at in order to be successful? Definitely patience. <laughs> um, you know, you, you definitely need patience. You need the uh, ability and willingness to compromise. Um, I think that, um, especially here in the town of Hempstead, you know, it's a very diverse town um, and the board um, represents different people. And I think that you have to be uh, willing to work with those representatives, whether they are of the same political beliefs of you with of you as not, or not, um, to make sure you do what's right. Um, so I think making sure you, you, you can compromise, making sure you have patience. Um, and unfortunately, um, you know, social media and, and instant access has done so much for uh, our world. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing now if we didn't have the ability uh, of, of um, you know, social media and uh, people logging on here. Um, but there's also a downside to social media. There's many people who say, um, you know, very, very nasty and vile things um, because they're sitting behind a keyboard. So I think one of the things that unfortunately you need in, in this business is thick skin and you need to have a family who understands that um, people are going to say some not so nice things uh, about you and you kind of have to um, have the ability to kind of shrug it off your shoulders because um, it's sad, but there's a lot of people out there. I think, you know, every vote that you make, um, you're making some people happy and you're making others unhappy. So you have to realize that you're not going to make everyone happy and you have to have, um, you know, the hope that you can kind of bring people together um, for the best interest of, of everybody that we serve. Um, you know, you know, you're not always victorious at that, but you got to try your best. Great. And just for our, our, our students, um, what kind of advice and, and recommendations or suggestions would you have for the, our middle level or high school students, you know, who are, who are pursuing life after high school, right? Just overall, like what kind of advice or recommendation would you provide them to help them kind of like find their path? 
so I, I think um, it kind of goes back to what I was saying before. Um, you know, you should really go to college and, and study and, and be a part of things that make you happy, that things that you really want to do. I mean, what's that? Oh, oh. Who's frozen? Uh, I think it's the councilman again. I think his uh, Wi-Fi yeah. is not, not that great over there. Okay, so um, we are going to wrap up shortly. If, if Councilman comes in, I'm going to let him finish the, uh, the comment, but I know he does have to go. Um, I just want to give uh, two quick shout-outs. Uh, one to Ms. Steckla, our counselor. She's with this all the time. Who is and, Dr. Uh, Dr. W, Paul? Um, I, that's uh, Dr. Weisenweider. She oh. is one of our psychologists at the high school. Got it. And um, also Dr. Ziriannis, thank you for being with us. Uh, she does her book reads every morning, and it's a, it's a great – great time if you, uh, if you get a chance to check it out um counselor do you want to finish your thought or do you have to run no listen i just want to say thank you all for having me um you know i, I hope that everyone who's listening or watches this stays healthy uh realize that these are definitely trying times but we'll all get through this as long as we stick together um and as things progress if uh if you need someone to jump on here again i'm happy to join you um and if anybody who's listening or watches this has any concerns um with what's going on or just general government in in, in general um you know my office uh, uh we're still manning the phones here you can one six eight one two three two four two uh, i'm on all the social media applications so you can hit me up there um and just stay safe stay healthy and uh Thank you, Ewing, uh, the great education in Oceanside, even in these trying times. Job well done. Councilman, can I also just let you know, the middle school students, the high school students, even our elementary school students are home. And I know that many of them have reached out asking if there's anything they could do to help. Um, so if you have any ideas or ways in which our students can help you, whether it's a social media message or, you know, collecting a certain item, if there's anything that you can think of, we have, um, you know, a thousand kids at the middle school and 2000 at the high school that are willing to help. So, you know, just give us, let Mitch or I know if, if there's anything you could think of that our students could do to help you. Absolutely. I will do. And, and the same goes for you guys and the students. If the students can think of anything that I can do to uh, help us get through this, let me know. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and, Be safe. And just, a, just a reminder, tomorrow we have uh, Robert Schulman from the LimCon Foundation. He's been working uh, pretty extensively with our Project Extra students at the elementary level. Uh, he is a prosthetist, which is an interesting and great uh, career. Uh, Wednesday, we have uh, two physical therapists coming on. Thursday, we have, uh, you know, we had our teachers on. Thursday, we're going to have a focus on mental health providers within the school. So we're going to have social worker, psychologist, and a counselor. And Friday, we have an aerospace mechanical engineer coming on. So that should also be an interesting one. So thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks. And uh, Councilman, uh, good luck in your, uh, your press conference. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Be good. Thank you.